Master Sword. Known as the Blade of Evil's Bane, it is the single most powerful weapon to face the evils of Ganon. Except the bigger on sword than Ocarina, but that's a Claymore, so I, I don't know. Point is, it's usually made a big deal, and is an iconic weapon of the Zelda series, so much so that it's nearly synonymous with the series as a whole. While the sword does undergo some changes from time to time, few would expect when we were told that it would have a new form in Tears of the Kingdom, it was gonna be bad. I know, I sound unreasonable, just hear me out. There will be some spoilers, but you know, the game is over a year old now, and you clicked on a video about it, and you're still here despite the spoiler warning, so yeah, let's go! We'll start with a really quick overview of the Master Sword's progression in Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, here we go. Start the game, infinite durability sword. Unknown damage since there isn't really a way to check or anything to test it against. Oops, it's actually third. Dehydration Dwarf wakes up, converts the dang thing in half. Did anyone bother to check where the other half went? Link wakes up, finds a broken sword with like four durability, and then we send the sword back in time with the power of plot. Then we find the sword in the present through a series of events, fully repaired and supposedly more powerful according to the Dig Tree. It repairs and grows in strength by taking in light, which I'm fairly certain retcons the Master Trials and, I don't know, probably Wind Waker. It's been repairing since the time the Zonai still existed, the ancienter time of I don't know, but it was definitely really long ago. It's got 40 durability and deals 30 damage, and this can be fact-checked. Sounds pretty good, right? Well... <laughs> So, the Master Sword is bugged, but how big of a problem is it really? Well, I can only explain with a quick explanation of the fusion system, and by explaining the math that makes it a problem. So, sit back, relax, and let the numbers flow through you. So the easiest way to explain the fusion system is that every weapon has a second health bar. That health bar is unlocked while fused, and the second health bar always depletes first as long as it's currently unlocked by fusion. The Master Sword has a regular health bar of 40 and a second health bar of 25, giving it a maximum capacity of 65, which is pretty damn good actually. Probably one of the better weapons in the game, since it got a maximum output of 100 in the depths before modifiers. 6500 damage total before modifiers is pretty massive and will always claim the life of at least one enemy. Except, not really, because that second health bar does not actually restore when the Master Sword restores itself. So, after you break it once, it's missing about 38.5% of durability, which is a pretty massive oversight. Unfortunately, we just kind of have to consider this a feature, since this was never fixed or even acknowledged. This one thing holds the Master Sword back tremendously as it now loses to a bunch of weapons with really, really easy triggers and causes a wonderful case of ludonarrative dissonance because while the sword is supposed to be stronger, evidenced by the whole thing where it no longer shatters against the gloom, between this bug and the mishandling of the sword compared to other weapons, which by the way are supposed to be weak, you never really have a good reason to use it. Not even against Ganondorf himself. Really, the only reason that you use the Master Sword is to conserve your actually good weapons, which in Tears of the Kingdom, you never really have to do. For a comparison to some other weapons, here's a few interesting ones. The Zora weaponry and their ability to double the weapon's power when Link is wet, which is triggered easily. There. I just did it, now I'm wet for the next half minute. The Knight's Broadsword and the ability to trigger double damage when Link is at low health, something that's easily exploited in depths where damage is usually applied over max health rather than current health. There's more, but the point is these weapons are in abundance within Tears of the Kingdom, allowing even the most casual of players feel like they are breaking the game into pieces when abusing this. And this isn't even calling to attention the absolutely ridiculous power of Savage Lionel Bows that outclass virtually every weapon in the game. Because so many of these weapons exist and are freely available from the start, the entire balance of the game is skewed in the player's favor and rewards players for being inquisitive and taking notes. A player who takes notes on where to find which weapon, or, you know, uses Google, becomes an incredibly powerful player by default and will likely plow through the leveling system of the game, causing enemies to rank up insanely fast and the general weapon power to skyrocket very quickly thanks in part due to the rise of strength in monster parts for fusion ammo. Now I don't think that this is bad bad design by any means. It is how a game like this should be designed in my opinion. It increases replayability by a wide margin and supports the community-based gameplay that single-player games tend to have and will likely always have by nature of its design. This is how Tears of the Kingdom operates. Creativity and proper operation trump all else. The Master Sword, though, is not a Tears of the Kingdom weapon. 
It is a Breath of the Wild weapon that seemingly got lost in transition to the new game. There is no correct way to approach using it as it still has the exact same design flaws that it had in Breath of the Wild, such as not being able to recharge when idle, causing you to have to destroy it first in order to get it back to full charge. And it does not interact with Tears of the Kingdom's design in the slightest. Oftentimes, I've seen comments talking about how the Master Sword has to break to retain balance, or it has to be weak to retain the balance by comparison to the other weapon. But as I just finished telling you, I don't think this is necessarily right. The Master Sword simply just has not been adjusted to the new game properly, because unless you seek out the Master Sword from the start, you've likely already outgrown the Master Sword by the time you get to it. And seeking out the Master Sword from the start is not how the game's natural progression is built. It actually actively works against it with the way Tears of the Kingdom presents itself, having just that little bit more structure with the way the story nudges you in directions to go into. And the part that feels particularly insulting towards the player base as a whole is that they try to pretend it's not like that. Hiding the damage from the player and presenting this as this mysteriously powerful sword, giving you the special fusion effect makes your master sword this garbage green color, and pretending it's doing more than it's actually doing, the master sword is just bad. And it should feel bad. But it's easy to fix it, really. So... <laughs> Here's how you could have easily fixed the Master Sword. Fixing the bug would in itself buff the Master Sword by almost 40%. Sure, it still isn't the best burst weapon, but it would be one of the most readily available, durable weapons. Dealing 6500 damage before buffs is of course nothing to sneeze at, and makes it a solid foundation for an everyman's weapon. In my opinion, it could probably be better than that, so if you ask me, I would make the durability 40 plus 40 instead of 40 plus 25. But let's just start with the low hanging fruit of fixing your damn game, you know? Option 2 is bringing back the Master Trials. I know we're a year in, and although there's allegedly no DLC coming, I'd still be happy if they just suddenly dropped the Trial of the Sword into Tears of the Kingdom, because this upgraded the Master Sword to 60 damage and 188 durability, and just made it one of the most brokenly overpowered weapons in Breath of the Wild. And you know what? It's fun to use it that way. Does it make it hard to justify other weapons? In the context of Breath of the Wild, yeah, absolutely. In the context of Tears of the Kingdom though, I'm not so sure. Due to the way the game works, burst damage is an important factor to consider, and other weapons can still outclass the Master Sword in burst in Tears of the Kingdom. So, although I think most mid-tier weapons would be priced out of the competition entirely, if we're gonna be real, that already happens anyway. Option 3 would be to give it a unique trait. Something the Master Sword lacks is an actual unique trait that sets it apart from the other weapons. Sure, it shows itself as the revitalized Sword of Legend, but what it really does is the aforementioned power upgrade against Gloom, and the problem with that is that it doesn't interact with the fusion system in any meaningful way whatsoever. So, let's fix that. Let's give it an ability where the sword is actually revitalized by Hylia's Light and gets a boost when fused with an item adjacent to Hylia's Light, the Light Dragon parts. Let's make the Master Sword three times as powerful if fused to a Light Dragon part, which includes the fusion material. Using the horn, this would make the Light Dragon infused Master Sword deal a total of 150 at base, and 195 when fighting gloomed enemies in the depths, 240 when fighting Ganon. Completely overpowered, but a massive upgrade that you, as a player, need to figure out for yourself. Plus, with the way dragon farming works in this game, it would be really annoying to stock up on these parts without cheating anyway. And if we're going to start balancing around cheating, then we might as well just give up entirely anyway. Then finally, there is an unrealistic fix I was thinking of. Obviously, this one cannot be implemented anymore, but my personal problem with the Master Sword is that narratively, it makes no sense. Why does the Master Sword break? To show Ganondorf's power, I guess. How does that resolve? Uh, just a hand-wavy explanation on how that is handled off-screen. How strong and durable is it when it's back and revitalized? I mean, you're not supposed to notice, but it's the exact same. The sword breaking is done for a dramatic tension almost exclusively, and is not used for any plot detail after this. It goes as far as to disappear from Link's hand, and he's just like, mm, yeah, that makes sense. From its story to its gameplay, I think Tears of the Kingdom mishandles the Master Sword every step of the way, which is a shame. The gravity of the Master Sword in, well, any Zelda game, really, is just gone. 
And the absolute worst part of it is that Tears of the Kingdom, alongside another game in the series, provides an amazing framework that could tie it all together so nicely. So what if the narrative kept the Master Sword as a central focus? What if the Sages didn't just give you the Coke Zero version of the Champion's abilities, but instead also powered up the Master Sword that you keep with you the entire game? The more I started thinking about it, the more I realized the framework that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom provide could not be any more perfect for this. Zelda herself is not someone who is in full control of her power. Zelda is, and I will use its term extremely loosely, a failure of the legend she's supposed to be, and instead her strength lies in science and study, which she's actually really good at. The Zonai being a very magical science type of civilization is effectively a perfect fit for Zelda to integrate in for a while, the four, five, temples can be built not just for what is basically no reason whatsoever, but instead they could draw parallels to the Wind Waker, upgrading the sword in tears as you beat them, with the temples basically being light sources designed specifically for fixing the Master Sword, with the one thing that heals the Master Sword being light, and with that it can basically be a reward for beating the entire game right before Ganondorf. In this way, you could more easily justify making the sword really strong. As an added benefit of the way the plot would be structured, this, in my opinion, would make Zelda and Link feel more like a team in this game. A real brains and brawn situation that they have to make work with no communication, being timelines apart. But most importantly, it could fix the Master Sword in a lore-friendly way that doesn't necessarily contradict previous games and giving a valid reason for it to be stronger than it is in the first game. Which I think is ultimately what the Master Sword should have been after its upgrade in the first place. Of course, the game is already out, so it's not like a major plot overhaul could realistically happen at this point, but as someone with major gripes with this game's story, I consider the Master Sword in this game to be a complete utter failure. Not just because it's weak gameplay-wise, but because it would have been really easy to write a very similar story to the one we've already been presented with that ultimately makes for an experience more distinct than Breath of the Wild, and making the sword more fun to use within Tears of the Kingdom itself. And that's always fun, if not not a little bit sad to think about. But let me know what you think. Are you fine with the Master Sword in the way it is right now? Or do you think that the Master Sword could have used some kind of buff, whether or not it's something that I presented to you earlier, or if it's something you've been thinking of yourself, and you've actually thought of a solution for it yourself? Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. But for now, I really hate the Master Sword.